bow before you. Worship at your feet. We bow before you. You're a so glorious. Oh, we bow before you. We worship you, Lord. We bow. At the center of it all is you that I see. Oh, at the center of it all, at the center of it all, at the center of it all, it's you, it's you that I see. Oh God, there is power in your name. There is power in your name. You're my soul, Lord. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift the voice in praise, as we lift our voice to pray, it's you. This is your advice to This is There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Miracle has happened in your name. Miracle, you are the leader. Worship his holy name. If you know he's the all in all for you. If you know he's everything for you. If you know he knows all about all you are passing through. All about your situation. All about your life. Just give God glory. Give God honor. Give God adoration. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy to be adored. What a great God. What a marvelous God. What a special God. Our God is special. Let him hear your voice. But then lift up your voice to him. Lift up your voice to him for he deserves all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have worship. I thought somebody would do a better. Amen. Can you lift up your two hands to heaven? You just want to take one prayer point very quickly. And I know the Lord will answer you in a just speed. Lift up your two hands. 
you are going to lift up your voice and cry loud and clear to God and say, Father, Father. you can do better. Say, Father, Father. anything that wants to stand on my way, when you have said yes to me, oh God, my Father, arise, Lord, arise, and take care of them. Can you go ahead and touch it, Almighty God? Anything that wants to stand on your way. When the Lord has said yes. Paliboske pandalale gabotolema shintalia. Ne prakata gazakatolimama. Jegede gazuntanda la prakato kasantali. Thank you, mighty Father. Glory be to your name. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed I pray for somebody this morning and wherever my father find the loudest amen anything standing between you and things God have said yes this morning heaven will take care of them in the name of Jesus I pray for someone here this morning that as this year is going to an end in that name that is above every other name, you will not have reason to sorrow in the name of Jesus. You will not weep in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy have programmed into the remaining days of this year, contrary to the plan and purpose of God for your life, let God Almighty destroy in the name of Jesus. I pray for you this morning. By the power that made God to be God, you will enter into 2021 rejoicing in fullness of joy. In fullness of joy. In fullness of joy. Daddy, as we go into your world, speak expressly to us. Let your world heal this morning. Let your world deliver. Let your world set free. Hey, I will bless everyone in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three powerful men want to go. Two. And, and let somebody shout the loudest hallelujah. Please be seated as king and queens in his presence. And the Almighty God bless you real good in Jesus' name. We thank God for your life and we thank God for you being here. All glory, all honor, all adoration to the Almighty God. And my prayer for you is that you are not living here without a testimony. I say you are not living here without a testimony. We want to quickly announce to us that if Jesus tarry in his coming next Sunday, my father in the Lord, our daddy, the pastor in charge of the region, Pastor Brown Oyisu, will be in the house. You are not excited. Hallelujah. And also by the special grace of God, you know we have three services. I may not be able to tell you which of the service. Do you want it to be second service? Are you sure? Come and bribe me. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. And by the social grace of God, one of our former pastors, the pastor, the church growth officer, the CGO, Pastor A.K. Ayola, those of us that attend Good Morning Holy Spirit, we know him very well. He will also be in one of the services next Sunday. Put your hand together for Jesus. And by the social grace of God, one of these days, that the Jew will be here. Uh, the way you are saying amen, you don't believe, but... Uh, don't worry. When that day will come, I will tell you, didn't I tell you? Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. And the name of the Lord will be glorified in Jesus' name. Praise God. We would love to appeal to all workers to move to Teen's Church so that our guests can have a seat. If you are seated comfortably as a worker and you see some of our guests roaming and no seat for them, 
just offer them your seat and you receive double blessing while you move to things church by the special grace of God you are going to be richly blessed in Jesus name I say you are going to be richly blessed in Jesus name praise the Lord tomorrow morning is going to be our good morning Holy Spirit and it's going to be anointing service part two of what we did last Monday arise this is he anoint him arise what this is he anoint what anoint him it was a powerful session and we are trusting God that tomorrow will be much more powerful than last Monday and the program runs through the whole of the week Monday through to uh, Friday and the Lord bless you as you partake in Jesus name uh, we are starting from where we stopped in the first service still the same topic when God says yes what is expected of you when the Lord say yes what is expected of you that is our topic this morning I'm not going to believe that God has said yes to you are you sure how do you know how do you know that God has said yes to you I'm going to help you out Isaiah 14 verse 27 says which is our test and our test for the month for the Lord of hosts had proposed and who shall disannul it and his hand is stretched out and who shall turn it back the summary of this Bible passage simply is when gods have said yes who can say no how do I know that God has said yes our Bible passage says for the Lord of hosts had proposed and who shall annul it God's yes are his plan and purpose for your life when God says yes to a thing, they are likely to be his plan and purpose for your life God's yes are the things he has said he will do for you or rather the things he had planned to accomplish in your life that is God's yes God's yes are his will for you according to his word God's will for you no matter your situation no matter your circumstances according to his word is his yes God's yes cannot be disobeyed I repeat God's yes, when God says yes it cannot be disobeyed by all forces in heaven and on earth be it negative or positive and that's why the scripture says for the Lord of hosts had proposed and who shall disannul it and his hand is stretched out to perform his word and who shall turn it back no one and that's why when God says yes no man can say no as soon as you are able to discover God's purpose for your life as soon as you are able to discover God's plan for your life as soon as you are able to discover the will of God for your life then you know God has said yes to you in many areas of your life for instance God's desire is that you are great and in me I say yes to your greatness God's desire is that you have good success according to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that means he has said yes to your success God's intention is for you to be fruitful and that is why in Genesis 1 27 he said be fruitful and 
multiply and subdue the earth. Meaning, God already has said yes to your fruitfulness. Even though you are married now, trusting God for the fruit of the womb, and the baby is not forthcoming, that doesn't mean that God has not said yes to your fruitfulness. Is somebody with me at all? Are you somebody with me at all? God has said yes to your healing. That's why 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes, you are what? You are healed. And so, if there's any medical report that you are carrying about contrary to that word, it doesn't mean that God has not said yes to your healing. And that's why I am praying for you, you will walk in the yes of the Lord for your life in the name of Jesus. God has said yes to your empowerment. And that's why he says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, And ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost must have come upon you. God do not want to leave you powerless. And so he has said yes to your empowerment. He had equally said yes to your deliverance. And that is why he said, Upon Mount Zion, over there chapter 1 verse 17, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. God has said yes to your dominion. According to that Genesis 1 to 7, after you are fruitful and you are multiplied and you are subdued, he says you should have dominion. He has said yes to your promotion. And that is why he says promotion comes not from east, from west, or from south. He says God is the righteous judge. He says he brings some down, he lifts us up. I am praying for you, sir. That in that name that's above every other name, you will not know stagnation. Yeah. Only one person is saying a better amen. Yeah. He has said yes to his presence upon your life, and that's why he said he will never leave you nor forsake you nor, 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 nor forget you. And so, when things are contrary in your life as to the things God has said yes to, it doesn't mean that God will not bring them to pass. It doesn't mean that God is slacking in his promises. It doesn't mean that God is slacking in his plan and purpose for your life. If you read Judges chapter 6, verse 12 to 14, there was an encounter between Gideon and the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord came with a salutation, with a greeting to Gideon, saying, the Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. That's verse 13 of Judges chapter 6. And Gideon said, what? If God is with me, or if God is with us, why are all, all these things befalling us? In other words, if God has said yes to us, if God has said yes to my promotion, why am I still stagnant? Why am I still stagnant? If God has said yes to my fruitfulness, why am I still barren? If God has said yes to my prosperity, why am I still poor? If God has said yes to my healing, why am I still sick? These are questions. Beloved, that God has said yes and there's no yet manifestation does not mean that God will change his mind. And so, there are certain things that are expected of you if you will see the manifestation of yes in your life. If you will see the manifestation of the things God has said yes to in your life, there are certain things that are expected of you. For those that were in the first service, we told them that, number one, they must wait for it. And that is the truth. If God has said yes to you, you are to wait for it. Waiting time is not a wasted time. Do I hear somebody say amen to that? Waiting time is not what? It's not a wasted time. Why? God make all things beautiful in his own time. In every plan and purpose of God, there is what is called divine timing. And that's why Job says in Job 14, 14, he says, I will wait. I will wait until my appointed time, until my time of change comes. Praise the Lord. One of the reasons why you must wait, like I told them in the first service, is the fact that for some of all, you don't have that spiritual stamina that can handle what God is, is proposing concerning your life. You don't have that spiritual stamina to be able to handle the plan of God for your life 
And that's why you have to wait. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 40 verse 31, that they that wait upon the Lord, they shall have their strength renewed. And that's why I'm praying for you. All your weaknesses will be exchanged for divine strength in the name of Jesus. I equally told you that we're here in the first service for the benefit of us in the second service. That one thing you must do, one thing that is expected of you, when God has said yes, once you have established God's plan and purpose, once you know where God is taking you to, just like Joseph, Joseph knew where God was taking him to at the age of 17. He had a revelation. And in that revelation, God revealed to him that he was going to make him great. Great than his siblings. But as soon as God said yes to his greatness, things begin to happen contrary to what God has revealed to him. But for there to be manifestation, Joseph can be emulated in the area of faithfulness. In other words, what is expected of you when God has said yes is that you remain faithful. Brethren, this is one of the things that is wrong in the church today. We are not patient. People are not faithful. Praise the Lord. Some are not faithful in their worship of God, in their service of God. If you are faithful, nobody will beg you to come to church. If you are faithful, nobody will beg you to serve God. If you are faithful, nobody will beg you to pray. If you are faithful, nobody will beg you to fast. If you are faithful, nobody will beg you to win soul. If you are faithful, nobody will beg you to give your tithe and your offering. That is the truth. There are obligations that God expects you to perform. The moment I say yes, we saw men like Zechariah and Elizabeth, who God has said fruit, who God has said yes to their fruitfulness. But if they are old age, they were not fruitful. They remain faithful. The Bible says they kept on performing their priestly role in the house of God until the day the angel of the Lord appeared and say your prayers are answered. I pray for somebody here this morning grace to be faithful all the days of your life the Lord will grant to you in the name of Jesus what is expected of you number three keep doing the right things when wrong things are happening tell your neighbor keep doing the right things oh my God I said tell your neighbor keep doing the right things when the wrong things are happening if you read First Samuel chapter 18, verse 5, the Bible says that David, in spite of the fact that Saul was against him, he behaved himself wisely. Saul was busy planning for the destruction of David so that David will not be enthroned so that David will not reign so that David will not become king read that for Samuel chapter 18 upon all the evil plans of Saul David kept on doing the right things if you read verse 29 and 30 the Bible says, and Saul was yet the more afraid of David. And Saul became David's enemy continually. Is there your Bible? Saul became David's enemy. How? Continually. And the Bible says in verse 30, that then the prince of the Philistine went forth and it came to pass after that they went for that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul so that his name was much set by David knew God had said yes he had been anointed king but the throne was not vacant 
Yet, David kept on doing right things. Today, many give excuses of delay in performance of God's promises for committing sin. Today, many give excuses of delay in performance of God's purpose in their life for indulging in sin, for doing wrong things, for boycotting the presence of God, stopping coming to church, stopping prayer meetings. Some people will go to the extent of burning house fellowship from their houses. When God has said yes to you, one thing that is expected of you is that you keep doing the right things even though wrong things are happening to you. Do I hear somebody say amen to that? Number four, never cast away your confidence. I repeat, never cast away your confidence in God. No matter what is happening around you, the moment you can establish God and say yes, let your confidence remain in God. Upon all that was happening to David, David's confidence was in the Lord. And that's why he said in Psalm 118, Psalm 118 verse 8 and 9, he said it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. He said, it is better to trust in the law than to put what? Confidence in princes. And if you read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 26, he said, for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy food from being taken. When God has said yes to you, what is expected of you is to keep your confidence in the law. When your confidence is in the law, I can assure you, it's only a question of time. That that God has said yes to, we manifest. If you are that fellow, can I hear you say a better amen? I say, if you are that fellow, can I hear you say a louder amen? Sir, man, don't withdraw your confidence from God and put it in man. Man is worst. Man will disappoint you. Man will fail you. Man will humiliate you. But God, your confidence in God will surely bring everything you are expecting to come to pass. Closely related to your confidence in God, number five, keep the hope in your heart and keep the hope alive. Hello? How many of you have hope that your tomorrow is all right? You have hope that your tomorrow is all right? Shout hallelujah. Sir, man, no economy of the world can stop God's yes for your life. Hello? Let your hope be in the law, not in Nigeria economy, not in the world economy, but what? In the, in the economy of heaven, the hope must be in the Lord. Brethren, today, many have hope in politicians and today they are disappointed. Two of us. Huh? Hello, sir. Where is your hope, sir? Are you sure? Are you sure? You are sure your hope is in the Lord. Can you shout hallelujah? Psalm 31, verse 27 says, Say, be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Be of what? Good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. And if you read Psalm 71 verse 14. He said, but I will hope continually. And I will yet praise the name of the Lord. I will yet praise thee more and more. I will hope continually in the Lord. And if you read some Romans chapter 12, verse 12, Romans chapter 12, verse 12, he says, 
rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayers. Beloved, when God has said yes, what is expected of you is you keep your hope alive. And I can tell you, sir, God does not dash anybody's hope. God does not raise your hope and dash your hope. When the Lord raised your hope, he brings it to power. Can I pray for only one person? In that name that is above every other name, as you hope in the Lord, your hope will come to pass. Maybe I should give you one more and keep the rest for those that will be attending the top service. Don't lose your faith in God's leadership over your life. Brethren, who is your leader? I say, who is your leader? Are you sure God is the one leading you? Do you think he can ever lead you to destruction? Oh my God, I am not getting your response. I say, can God ever lead you to destruction? Can God ever lead you to trouble? Can God ever lead you to poverty? Can God ever lead you to affliction? Listen to me, sir. Wherever God is leading you, he knows the better way. Listen to me. I'm closing in a minute. When the children of Israel were to leave Egypt, the Bible says there was a shortcut. There was what? Shortcut. But God did not lead them by the shortcut. The Bible says the Lord led them by the Red Sea. And suddenly, they got face to face with the Red Sea. They were losing hope in the leadership of God for their life. How will God lead us by the Red Sea? That was their question. They cried to Moses, was there no burial ground in Egypt? that you brought us to be buried here in the wilderness? And Moses looked at them. He said, hold your peace for you will see the salvation of the Lord. Listen to me, sir. The one leading you know where he's taking you to. Oh my God. The enemy were coming behind. Hello? They were coming where? And look at the Red Sea. We make a miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. Are you presently stranded? You are stranded, the enemy are coming behind. There is no way to move forward. Listen to me. If it is God that is leading you, He will make a way where there is to no way. God, we make our way where there seems to be. Oh my God. Do you want God to lead you, sir? Hello, I'm asking. Do you want God to lead you, sir? Hello? Joseph never knew that the way to the throne God promised him was a stopover in Potiphar's house, stopover in prison, and elevation to the throne. Listen to me, sir. I am announcing to somebody this morning, where you are now is only a stopover. Oh my God, you didn't get me, sir. Hello? I say where you are now is where? A stopover. Hey, hey, hey. You didn't hear me loud and clear. Only one person is getting the gist. As repeat, where you are now is where? Stop over. That prison is a stop over. That slavery is a stop over. That bondage is a stop over. That captivity is a stop over. It can't stop you from reigning at the top. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. On your feet. God, we make our way. <laughs> Where there seems to be. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Oh my God. 
Have you lost hope in his leadership? Hey, Yes, Lord. For he will make Brethren, if you want him to lead you, you want his leadership. Do you know, sir? Do you know, ma? He is the ancient of this. He is the Alpha and Omega. He knows the ending right from there. It doesn't matter where you are now. He knows where he's taking you to. Can you tell somebody I am at the stopover? Oh my God, I didn't hear it loud and clear. Tell your neighbor, this is not my destination. If you are judging me by here, you are wasting your time. This is just a stopover. <laughs> it is just what? A stopover. What if I should tell you? You see me here. In city of light, it's a stopover. You didn't get me. Uh, it's a stopover. From here, I am taking off. Who is taking off with me? In my private jet, you know. Lift up your hand and appreciate the Almighty God. Give God glory. Give God honor. Give God adoration. 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 Give God adoration, man. Lipato gazanta le brada. Jelebos kete gazuta brande kasanta li. Kebole gazuta braga. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Bow down your head. You want to come under His leadership. You must be a sheep for Him to lead you. He does not lead goats. That's why David said, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want." If you cannot surrender to him, he cannot lead you. If you not rededicate to him, he cannot lead you. But eventually you are already going astray. But you want him to lead you. And you have been compromising your faith. Can you humble yourself this morning and come to him now? If you want to come under his leadership, can you wave your right hand to heaven? Lift up your right hand to heaven. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. Raise that hand to heaven. You want to come under his leadership. He wants to lead you to where he has proposed. He said, I propose it. He's the one taking you to where he wants to take you. He said, No man can disannul it. So if you are lifting that hand, can you just quietly come to the altar now and come and meet me here? Let me pray with you. If you are raised your hand, please come, please come, please come, ushers. Please help them, help them. Please, if you are raised your hand, come, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. Wherever you are, you have raised your hand. You want to come under the leadership of God Almighty. You want to come under the leadership of your Savior and your Redeemer. Please come now. Please come now. Please come. Allow him to lead you. Don't go astray. He alone is the way, the truth, and the life. No one coming unto the Father except by him. Come through him now. I am waiting. I'll count only one one to three. If after the count of three you are not here, that means you don't want to come. And listen to me, God already has said yes to your greatness. Don't say no this morning. One. I'll count only to three. Two. Is anyone like that? You are coming, please come before I finish praying with these people. The rest of us at the altar, can you please begin to ask God for mercy? If you are standing there, you know you are not yet under his leadership. Please come. And if you are sure you are already under his leadership, begin to pray for these people standing at the altar. That God Almighty will lead them as he's leading you. That is if you are sure that he's the one leading you. Ask this morning that the Lord will begin to lead these ones. I is already leading you. Go ahead and talk to the Almighty God. Pali brandeka santa li mama. So pray no gazika panda la le gazike tele kuramate gazwanta le braga santali thank you mighty father in jesus mighty name we have prayed mighty and everlasting father i want to thank you for the life of these your children lord god almighty because they have said yes to your calling this morning because they are willingly come under your leadership that you will lead them even to eternity in the name of jesus they will not fall by the wayside lord no, no, no gate or hair 
shall be able to uproot them from your hand in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Kindly follow that, my sister, one minute. Daddy and mommy, please, sir. Kindly follow that, my sister, one minute. Just one minute. Just of all, just raise your hand. My time is fast, man. Lift up your two hands. Brethren, only one prayer you want to pray because of time. I didn't have time to explain this thing that is called losing hope of his leadership. When the children of Israel saw the Red Sea, they lost hope of his leadership and they began to murmur. But Joseph never lost hope of his leadership. Even in slavery, he never lost hope. In prison, he said to the, to, to, to the sheep baker, he said, ha, when you get back, the sheep butler rather, he said, when you get back, tell the king about me. He, he knew God was the one leading. Lift up your two hands and say, Father. Father. You can do better, sir. Say, Father. Father. All the days of my life, days of my life. let me never lose hope of your leadership. Let me never lose faith of your leadership. Oh God, my Father, I surrender to you, oh God. Lead me all the way. Lead me all the way. From my stopover, take me to my destination. Go ahead and touch it, Almighty God. That from your stopover, the Lord will take you to your destination. Where you are now is just a stopover. God has said yes to that glorious destination. I had the Lord to lead you all the way, all the way, all the way. He led the children of Israel until they got to the promised land. Until they got to the promised land. The land flowing with milk and honey. They have stopped over at Mount Sinai. They have stopped over in the wilderness. They have stopped over where there was bitter water. Oh, my river to Gabranda. So le basse que te le le le, je parle bracato gaga, kaka kaka kaka, kala bragade gasunta le baba. They had stop over at at wall of Jericho, but eventually they penetrated to the promised land. Mali protoro zakata brada. At Giga they had a stop over where their reproach was rolled away. Paribro kosa pali mashantalia. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. My father and my God, wherever you find the loudest amen right now, let this one not lose faith of your leadership in the name of Jesus. Oh, King of glory, take hold of the life of everyone under the influence of my voice and lead us all the way in the name of Jesus. I decree and I prophesy. From wherever stopover you are now, the Lord will take you off to your destination. It's not about Jesus. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three powerful amen like thunder. Want to go?